Hello internet, what's up? Doing a book review today, I haven't done a book review in almost a month. Uh, Seneca, Letters of a Stoic. A friend recommended this to me a few months ago uh, that I saw Tim Ferriss was uh, talking about this guy too, which was cool because you know, anything Tim Ferriss is on to, it's usually works, usually makes money or usually wisdom or whatever. You always learn something. So this book was pretty amazing, man. This, this, uh, this gentleman was about 2,000 and change years ago. So his, uh, not claim to fame, but his story is that he was the right hand man, the strategic advisor to the Roman Emperor Nero, who, I'm not gonna say much about Nero, uh, but anyways, um, uh, Seneca fell in love with Nero's cousin, I believe, uh, Lucilius, and this book is a series of his letters, about 123 letters that he wrote to her. Um, talking about various things. So, um, Nero actually made Seneca commit suicide uh, because of, I don't exactly know why, but I think it was because of his love for his cousin. Crazy times. Crazy times. Uh, but it was pretty cool because I, I guess I would say I'm well versed in Roman history. Uh, so it was cool to see Seneca talk about all the other uh, you know, talk about Julius Caesar, talk about uh, Marcus Crassus. He mentioned Crassus a few times in here, which was very, very important because I feel that guy's uh, one of the lost titans of history that not a lot of people talk about. Um, I got so much out of this book. <clears throat> I'll attempt to read some of the highlighted things. But the one thing I am going to say is this morning, for all you vegans out there, I know i got a lot of vegan friends, and I'm actually reading a pretty sweet book right now. It's called How to Not Die. It's not about vegan, but it's about plant-based living. Anyways, it was very interesting that this gentleman, 2,000 years ago, he's talking about being a vegan. Okay? So, you know, let's, let's pause for a second. Let's step back. I want to say something. So, you know, why am I spending my time doing book reviews? Why am I reading this book? Well, uh, uh, just to become intelligent. Right, uh, and also, it just blows my mind just to communicate that I, I feel there's a lot of people that don't uh, know that there's so many answers and so many wisdom that have gone in 2,000 years ago that humans have already known. Okay, humans were just as smart, if not smarter, than they were, you know, a thousand years ago. Except for the fact that we have more technology now. Now, in us as a race, we've actually evolved. So from decade to decade the race of humans does get better or it just evolves. So it's pretty interesting. <clears throat> and one thing I, I'm learning now too, uh, that I feel in this time of uh, advanced technology, the, the amount of technology we're learning, the intelligence is at an unprecedented rate. It's, it's absolutely insane to believe where the hu humans will be in 500 years from now. A thousand years from now it was only a hundred years ago that the first commercial airplane was was sold that was the first seat right so about 150 years ago <clears throat> if I were to say to you you know I can sit in a seat and fly across the world or across the country from ocean to ocean it would probably kill me they'd call me a witch that's what happened before this is real <laughs> anyways so I'm just blown away that the wisdom from 2,000 years ago that I could buy a book for 20 bucks and read this book. Uh, it's quite, quite amazing. And like nobody's telling me to read these books, right? You just kind of, as a wisdom seeker, you, you, you kind of find these things. Um, and this ties into the, uh, the, and then ties into entrepreneurship because to be able to read stuff like this, you know, I spent two hours reading 30 pages of this book today. Okay, not, not everyone can do that, but that's being in control of your time. That's the biggest thing, right? When you're in control of your time, you're in control of every decision you make every day. And in this book too, <clears throat> Seneca talks about, uh, about money, about how you don't live for money because money is uh, it's the root of all slavery, including people who make money and people who work for money. So it's interesting, like for me, uh, as a business owner, I, I literally work like yesterday I started work at 5.30 in the morning. I didn't finish till 9.30. And I was just 
point I was just exhausted. And I've been doing this for decades, okay? I'm not talking about how special or important I am. Um, it, this is just what it takes to reach that level. So um, that's just kind of interesting. Okay, so I'll get into it. I'll just read some of my highlighted notes here. Uh, but the biggest letter I'm going to recommend for health people, because I'm really big into health, is, is I think it was the third last letter or fourth last letter, and he's talking about vegan and how you eat the... Maybe I'll maybe read that one. Let's see if I can find it. I did highlight it, so... Oh, here we go. Got it. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Okay, here we go. So this is kind of a long one. Okay, talks about Pythagoras, if you know mathematics. Okay, I'll, I'll just, uh, no, I'm not gonna read it. So it is page 205 of this book here, Penguin Books. I believe Tim Ferriss, you can sign up for a free ebook, and he's evolved this book. Um, I don't think he's copied it. He's taken this and then put his own twist on it, I believe. I don't know, I haven't looked into it. But he's got a lot of free stuff. Like Tim Ferriss is pretty awesome, man. Like you, you wanna learn, you wanna become smarter, just go follow that guy. <laughs> just, he tells you everything you need to, or points you in certain directions. Anyways, start reading some stuff. The new regime opened well in Nero's first five years were later spoken of a period of unequaled good government. The emperor Trajan even calling them the finest, period, finest period in history of imperial Rome. For this Rome was indebted to Seneca and an army officer named Burrus. These two most influential and well, as well as the most enlightened of the men surrounded Nero. So oftentimes, think of, um, there's so many like, you know, you know, Sidney Crosby, okay, he makes a lot of money, but I don't want to be Sidney Crosby, I want to be guy, the guy that writes Sidney Crosby's check, okay? So there's a lot of people behind the scenes that you don't see that are very influential and very powerful to, um, to governments, to not-for-profit organizations that you'll never hear about them. They're never going to do a book review and tell them about their day and stuff like that, right? So this is... This is Nero, he's the strategic advisor, the right-hand man to Nero, the Roman emperor, who is the most powerful man on earth at the time. So I can read his notes that he wrote? Like, that's, that's amazing. Like, it just blows my mind. Okay, enough of the sales, just love books. The shortest route to wealth is the contempt of wealth. Rank counted for nothing against the duty of all men. There were reasons for development of this pointed style. To read him straightforward is like dining on nothing but anchovy sauce. What does that even mean? It means that you can't just take someone for the surface area. Uh, make your own Bible. Collect all the words and sentences that in all your reading have been to you like the blast of triumph out of Shakespeare, Seneca, Moses, John, and Paul. Um, that's what I've done. It's called making your own philosophy. You just pick up stuff that influences you. You evolve, blah, blah, blah. You make up your own philosophy. I've studied Buddhism, Taoism, uh, Christianity. What else? Uh, just how to be a good person, the good word. Samurai. And you come up in the, the Mongols, and you just come up in a lot of Roman stuff. You just come up with your own philosophy of what you want to do with your life and stuff like that. All but the few timeless versions of the classic authors need to be revised or done afresh, perhaps every half century. Okay, let's go here. Okay, I'll get into letters. That was the intro. If you are looking on anyone as your friend, when you do not trust him as you trust yourself, you are making a grave mistake. After friendship is formed, you must trust. That's true. Why should I keep back anything when I'm a friend? Why shouldn't I imagine I'm alone when I'm in his company? There are certain people who tell 
any person they meet things that should only be confided to friends, unburdening themselves of whatever is on their minds into any ear they please. Trusting everyone is as much as a fault as trusting no one. And I got to be honest, that's one of the things I've been working on the last two and a half years. I just kind of wear my heart on the sleeve. Uh, that's, I've learned a lot. Uh, I've lost a lot of money in business from it. And uh, yeah, by default, I, you know, call this uh, cynicism or me just being stubborn. I don't really trust people anymore. Like You got to prove to me why I trust you. Um, because nowadays it's really all about family and the business agenda, right? So I wonder if people would debate that topic. I'd like to hear what people have to say about that comment. <clears throat> Similarly, people who never relax and people who are invariably in a relaxed state merit your disapproval. Relentless energy of a haunted mind. Yeah, so if you, and you notice I use this in martial arts, um, a jumpy mind, like a jumpy fighting style shows an unrested mind. So someone who is too relaxed or not relaxed enough shows to me uh, they have a haunted mind and you can pick up that stuff. And when you're fighting in an octagon with four ounce gloves, these things matter. Uh, some men have shrunk so far into dark corners that objects in bright daylight seem quite blurred to them. That means their souls very tainted. The devil has them. Um, okay, if you don't understand what I mean by the devil, uh, they're just in a very dark place, not a good place. <laughs> I view with pleasure and approval the way you keep on at your studies and sacrifice everything to your single-minded efforts to make yourself every day a better man. It's just, so when I, this is like page 36 of this book, so... When I read that, I'm just like, wow, yeah, this, this is me. This relates to me. Let me read that again. I view with pleasure and approval the way you keep on at your studies and sacrifice everything to your single-minded efforts to make yourself every day a better man. That's all you can do, man. That's all you can do. But at the end of the day, don't lie to yourself, right? Did you, give your, did you do your best you can do? Yes or no? It doesn't matter if you made a mistake or you're... You're not smart enough. You don't know something. Are you doing the best you can do? Yes or no? It's really it. So, and it's only you that can look yourself in the mirror at the end of the day. And, uh, and just, you know, don't lie to yourself. Uh, refrain from following the examples of those whose craving is for attention, not their own improvement. Avoid shabby attire, long hair, and unkept beard, an unspoken dislike of silverware, sleeping on the ground, and all other misguided means of self-advertisement. Well, you know, I'm not saying, you know, this is 2,000 years ago, right? Well, he's a right-hand man of the Emperor of Rome. He's saying not have a beard. Like, I don't know, right? They're very controversial. Inwardly, everything should be different, but outward face should conform with the crowd. Let's read that again. Inwardly, everything should be different, but our outward face should conform with the crowd. Ah, being the, sheep, the wolf in sheep's clothing kind of thing or just blending in the chameleon. The first thing philosophy promises us is the feeling of fellowship, of belonging to mankind and being members of a community. Being different will mean the abandoning of that manifesto. Our motto, as everyone knows, is to live in conformity with nature. It is quite contrary to the nature to torture one's body to reject simple standards of cleanliness and make a point of being dirty to adopt a diet that is not just plain but hideous and revolting. The standard which I accept is this. One's life should be a compromise between the ideal and the popular, and the popular morality. People should admire our way of life, but they should at the same time find it understandable. Anyone entering our homes should admire us rather than our furnishings. It is great that a man can treat his earthenware as if it was silverware. And a man who treats his silverware as if it was earthenware is no less great. Finding wealth an intoler intolerable burden is the mark of an unstable mind. 
Limiting one's desires actually helps to cure one of fear. Cease to hope, he says, and you will cease to fear. Fear keeps pace with hope, nor does their so moving together surprise me. Both belong to a mind in suspense, to a mind in a state of anxiety through looking into the future. Both are mainly due to the projecting of our thoughts far ahead of us instead of adapting ourselves to the present. Uh, I, I get guilty of that all the time. I mean, even like recently, my ego, my brain is, because I'm an entrepreneur, like I want the vision, I want the future, you know, I want the wealth, I want the successful business, I want my own home and all that kind of stuff, right? It's like, yeah, but you're, that doesn't even exist. That only exists in your mind. The only thing that exists is right now, this book, this, uh, you know, me drinking this coffee. So that's one of my challenges. There is no enjoying the possession of anything valuable unless one has someone to share it with. Daily intimacy with someone will be more benefit to you than any discourse. People believe their eyes rather more than their ears. Mm. So one thing that I'm actually, Tim Ferriss has a video about how to apply stoicism in your daily life where he talks about the Seneca. I watched it just goes, hey, I'm reading this book. I want to check it out. And uh, one thing I got from this book and that video was that uh, stoicism in philosophy, it helps you uh, so your emotions aren't taking control of your words. And now people believe their eyes rather than more than their ears. So, you know, the, the transition I've been going through this last half decade it's been quite profound in terms of, hey, wow, look at all this. Look, like, whoa, whoa, this is important. Hey, you know, so I, I've been kind of talking a lot um, and I'm s trying to talk less and observe more and talk more, less words, meaning more just actions. And I've been doing like little tests and stuff like that. And uh, it's been kind of interesting. So um, I look forward to doing more stuff like that. But then other times, you know, you got to be yourself, right? So don't try to be someone you're not. Just be you. And just be a good person at the end of the day. No one's going to fault you for being, um, you know, a little over-assertive or something like that. For all my friends, personally, i got to be honest. I'd, I'd rather, uh, I'd rather, um, rather friends with hot heads than cold feet. You know, it's just my, my, my style. Bad examples have a way of recoiling on those who set them. Retire into yourself as much as you can. Associate with people who are likely to improve you. Welcome those whom you are capable of improving. The process is a mutual one. Men learn as they teach. Indulge the body just so far as suffices for good health. He's talking about good health. Your food should appease your hunger. Your drink should quench your thirst. Your clothing keep out the cold. Your house be a protection against weather. It makes no death difference whether it is built of turf uh, or marble imported from another country. What you have to understand is that thatch makes a person just as good a roof as gold does. Yeah, you see this stuff is like, 2,000 years ago, someone wrote this, man. It's like, yeah, it's going to take you a little while to read. <laughs> and I'm only reading the stuff I highlighted, right? Uh, and really on page 48, there's 260 pages here. So I'm going to cut this off here. Keep it short. I got to get back to work. Got tons of stuff to do. Uh, Seneca, badass book. Uh, the next one I'm going to read, well, I've read half of it, was uh, Marcus Aurelius, Meditations of Marcus Aurelius. But I got to be honest, it was literally the hardest book I've read. I read half of it. And I want to start over again because it's like I read one passage and I got to, you know, it takes me 20 minutes to read one passage because every single word he uses is just like, oh, I need to look up and research these words. Anyways, keep growing your strong mind and that's cool and stuff and uh, buy this book. See ya.